will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Why? Because he's good. Because he's good. I'm, I'm going to rejoice because he's good. And um, if you don't know that he's good, he's good. I'm telling you, he's good. The Bible says that the goodness of the Lord will cause a man to change his mind. He uses the word repent, but it literally means to change the mind. And um, so I guess uh, you guys know where I came from. I got the College Park T-shirt on this morning. And, um, you know, they're my peeps over there. So if anybody's on from College Park, College Park, whatever, then, um, you know, give me a shout out. You know, I want to welcome you this morning. And uh, I want to send blessings out this morning, too, because, you know, uh, Abraham, when he met Melchizedek, Melchizedek said that uh, he blessed Abraham and said. So that just lets me know that our words can be used to bless. And so we might as well use our words to bless rather than to use those words to curse. So I send blessings to Nigeria this morning, to Omaha, Nebraska, uh, South Carolina, Maryland, uh brazil we send blessings to you guys this morning or you know where whatever time it may be where you are louisiana mississippi montana new houston we send blessings to you guys today and we say you're blessed all day today and if you're getting ready to go to bed you're 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 blessed in your sleep when your head hits the pillow it'll hit the pillow in peace and your your sleep will be sweet send blessings to saint petersburg florida God bless you, Los Angeles. We up and outside. <laughs> We're going to talk about that outside thing one day. I, I think I kind of back got it, but we outside. Hey, man. Uh, blessings to those of you in Zambia this morning, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We send blessings to those of you in Pennsylvania today, Arizona, Johannesburg, South Africa. God bless you. Tobago. God bless you. Virginia. God bless you guys. We send blessings. We say you're blessed. We say you're exceedingly best blessed. Zimbabwe, we send blessings to you guys today. And uh, we thank God that you are blessed. Jacksonville, Florida, bless. Jersey City, bless. Atlanta, Georgia, blessed. Uh, uh, the UK, you're blessed. I'm telling you, man, let me tell you guys something. Long Island, you're blessed. Where's College Park at? Just because I got a T-shirt on, I got to I gotta see somebody from College Park, Georgia or Maryland. But, you know, you're blessed today. I'm just going to bless you if you don't come on. Nigeria, St. Louis, so we send the blessings to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Mexico, we send blessed. Ghana, we bless you guys again. We say you're blessed what all day long Fayetteville Georgia yeah you are blessed all day long there you go College Park appreciate that Miss Jones College Park South Africa West Point we we send blessings to you way College Park again College Park there we go there we go and uh blessings to you guys uh Griffin Georgia we send blessings your way Massachusetts McDonough we send blessings your way Byron Georgia we send blessings your way. Uh, yeah, the University of Florida, we bless you guys. We send blessings your way. We bless you. We, we, we believe that 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 is significant in in your in your life. Hoganville, uh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Pittsburgh, Wisconsin, Maryland. We send blessings your way. Noonan, you guys are blessed today. You're blessed today. All over Texas, you're blessed today. Yes, you're blessed today. Somebody said, what is he doing? I'm, I'm sending the blessings out. Blessings to those of you in Cape Town. Uh, those of you in the Bronx, uh, Jonesboro, Dallas, uh, send blessings to you guys today. And you know what? You are blessed. You are blessed. New Zealand, you're blessed today. Yeah. Richmond, blessed today. My people in South Africa, you are blessed today. Thank you guys for taking the time to join us like every morning. It's all also also good. Shreveport, Louisiana, blessed today. Corona, California, you are blessed. Mississippi, we send blessings your way. New Mexico, Chicago, 
you're blessed el paso you are blessed sacramento you are blessed today in the name of the lord jesus christ baton rouge blessed cleveland ohio blessed milledgeville georgia blessed man that's so awesome we just get to pronounce the blessings um uh yes i am i'll be preaching tonight um you guys you know i i just want to spend some time with y'all before i before i get there you know it's just uh swaziland you're blessed today Austell, blessed boston massachusetts blessed you're blessed hallelujah i think you ought to be shouting about it praise god canada you are blessed praise the lord uh barcelona spain you guys are blessed kenya you're blessed we send blessings there in jesus name uh new york city you know you bless Botswana, bless bless you guys are blessed praise god uh let's send them out one more minute praise the lord uh yeah i'm grateful too i'm just so so grateful to god and um you know he's so good to us isn't he he's so good to us it's always been about him man and today let's just make it about him let's make it about him today let's not make it about ourselves that's so easy to do let's make it about him today and so now remember you are a thermostat not a thermometer so you get to set your day just like you set the temperature for your house set it and keep it set and uh i believe that all of the circumstances will begin to work together to bring you to that setting and so that's what we're doing we're not going around taking the temperature Oh, I ain't feeling good today. Oh, this ain't going to be a good one. Lord Jesus, you got to help me. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't rock like that. We set the thermostat. We set the pace. We set our day. All is well. Amen. All is well. And this is going to be a supernatural day of great revealings. Uh, God's going to show you how to do some stuff that you didn't know how to do. He's going to give you some specific instructions on what to do about certain things that uh, you just kind of maybe, you know, didn't know what to do about it. And I believe that you're going to hear from God today. I believe if it takes you passing a billboard and God speaks through a billboard, he's going to reach you today. I believe if a commercial comes on, he'll speak through a commercial or somebody walk in there and just give a word. This is going to be a day of revealing a day a day of great revelation that will bring about some some great great things in your life and so yeah man uh we are excited and we are stirred up about the power of god and what god is going to do in your life hallelujah well i want to i want to do something today we're going to get psalm 91 equipped and then we're going to we're going to program your spirit for success. I think we think about that, you know, programming your spirit for success. We're going to use words and confessions to program your spirit for success. And then we're going to talk about the door um, that uh, that will keep you in a place where you can you know, how to use con contention to stay away from uh, compl con uh, what was that we talking about yesterday? Um, come on, y'all help me out. What were we talking about yesterday? Uh, complacency. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to continue that today and learn how to stay out of that place of complacency. And, uh, the door, there is a door that'll keep you from being complacent and don't settle. Okay. You know, you're dating some guy and you know, he, well, you know, he all right. Well, he ain't the one you need to be marrying cause your biological clock ticking turn your clock off no don't settle yeah but pastor i don't know if i'm gonna i don't know if i'm gonna get nobody else if i'm gonna take him do not settle listen you're a child of god you don't have to settle and uh we don't settle we're 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 grace people we don't settle and god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than what we can ask or think and so do not settle uh, you got a job? Well, you know, this job, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I might as well just stay here for life. Don't settle. Don't settle. 
You don't even like the job. In fact, you can't stand pulling up in a parking lot. Don't settle. God will, will absolutely bring into your life and into your view the thing that you want to do, the thing that you enjoy doing. That's the word today. Don't settle. Don't settle. Um, somebody's settling for, for um, I don't know, a car or settling for drama. Don't settle for drama. Settle for depression. Don't be settling for depression. You ain't got to settle for nothing, baby. God wants you to have the best, to be the best, and he wants to show you how to do that. But it's going to be difficult to achieve if you settle. Don't settle. And just program your spirit today to let you recognize places in your life where you're beginning to just settle for it. You know, you know, you you, you went to the lady to do your hair and it wasn't right. And you settled for it. Don't do that. Your hair all on the right side, look like your head. Don't, don't settle for that. But no, man, you 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 keep going until you find somebody that can do your hair exactly like you want your hair done. You'd be surprised if you look at your life, the things that we've settled for. And we don't have to settle for that. And I know I'm not going to. I mean, I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pressing on. And, you know, when that thing comes to pass and, and it moves from that dimension of the unseen into this physical place where I can see it. All I got to say is, won't he do it? Won't he make a way? That's what I'm saying. And so do not settle. OK, I think you get me. Do not settle. Amen. Everybody got that? Don't settle. All right. So we going higher and higher. I mean, he's high and wide and deep and we're not settling for just surface stuff. We want we want the deeper, not the cheaper. So do not settle. All right. <laughs> I like what she said. Get your hair right. <laughs> That's right. Get your hair right. Don't be settling. <laughs> Get your hair right. Get your, your whatever you got on your head. Get it right. Don't sit up there and settle like that's the only person in your whole city that can do it. And, and I, while we're being, you know, humor about it, you know, we just we can't do that, man. We can't do that. If you'll settle for for little things, then you'll you'll settle for other things. And, and I don't believe that's God's will for your life. That is the life of complacency and complacency can be very dangerous because complacency will even get you to the place where you start living off your past victories and God, like God is broke of victories. Like he can't do no more victorious stuff for you. And that's not true. Um, God is extraordinary in what he wants to do in your life. Um, don't be mediocre. Uh, don't be average. And you know, a man that defends himself will always remain average. There's just sometimes you just got to know your God. And just, you know, keep it moving, man. Just keep it going and and, and do what you got to do. You know, people going to do what people going to do. But, you know, you don't even settle for that. I'm just I'm just going to keep it rocking. And um, amen. Let's go ahead and get Psalm 91 equipped. Then let's program our spirit for su success. And then um, we're going to talk some more about the door that keeps you from complacency. All right. You ready? All right, let's do it. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, 
nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. I am protected from every virus, regardless of the name. I exalt the name of Jesus above every other name. I will not walk in fear. My immunity is strong. The anointing is real. And I declare that I am healed in, in perfect health. I do not fear COVID. I do not fear monkeypox. I don't feel none of that stuff because my God is who I depend on. Therefore, fear, you shall not cause me to panic. It won't happen. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I see. I am moved by the word of God. And I declare that all is well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I shout grace, grace to every mountain in my life. I declare that those mountains will be reduced to molehills. Grace, grace to every situation in my life. I am at peace. I have peace that passes all understanding. I speak to my soul. Soul, you be at peace. I speak to my emotions. Emotions, you be at peace. And I declare that all is well with me now. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You are Psalms 91 equipped. I mean, you equipped, boy. We, we zip that thing. We button that thing up. You understand? You good to go. All right? You good to go. Come on. Now, as we're saying this, we're programming our spirit for success. Are you ready for this? I am filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. His will is my prosperity. God delights in my prosperity. He gives me power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant upon the earth. I immediately respond in faith to the guidance of the Holy Spirit within me. I'm always in the right place at the right time because my steps are ordered of the Lord. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And I am well able to possess all that God has provided for me. God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. My financial income now increases as the blessing of the Lord overtake me. I honor the Lord with my substance. My barns are filled with plenty. My presses burst forth with new wine. I am like a tree. <laughs> now, hold on a minute. I just heard somebody say, well, I'm broke. No, don't say that. We're trying to get you to say the opposite of broke. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't say that. Yeah, I, I just I just kind of feel somebody say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I'm broke. No, don't don't say that. 
don't say you broke in no way don't don't say you broke in happiness don't say you broke in money don't say you broke no kind of way your broke days are over with forever praise god come on i am like a tree planted by the rivers of water i bring forth fruit in my season my leaf shall not wither and whatever i do will be successful the grace of god even makes my mistakes to prosper lord have mercy i am blessed in the city blessed in the field i'm blessed coming in and i'm blessed going out i'm blessed in the basket and i'm blessed in the store my bank account investments health relationships flourish the blessings of the lord overtake me in all areas of my life the blessings of the lord makes truly rich he has no sorrow with it my god makes all grace abound towards me in every favor and earthly blessing so that i have all sufficiency for all things and abound to every good work the lord has opened unto me his good treasure and blessed the works of my hand he has commanded the blessing upon me in my storehouse and all that I undertake. I delight myself in the Lord, and he gives me the desire of my heart. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Therefore, I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhabit my mind. I am delivered from the power and the authority of the darkness. I cast down reasonings and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of God's word. I am filled with the wisdom of God. Yes. And I am led to make wise and prosperous decisions. The Spirit of God guides me into all truth regarding my financial affairs and all of my affairs. The Lord causes my thought to become agreeable to his will. And so my plans are established and they succeed. There's no lack for my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, and I do not want. Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Having received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, I reign as a king in life by Jesus Christ. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, I started to say shout amen, but you can shout it. I can't hear you, but it, it amen. Just go ahead and shout it anyway. Yeah, just shout it. Don't scare nobody now. If you're at work, be quiet because I don't want you to get fired because you shouting amen and you blame it on me. All right, we good. All right, now let's 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 do this now. So we're talking about the door that um, keeps you free from complacency, and and yesterday we defined complacency as a feeling of being satisfied with how things are and not wanting to try to make them better. It's literally self satisfaction. It's the dude that you know he's satisfied and he's not trying to, you know be motivated to do any better and and you got to be careful like that that could literally lead you into a place of um self-righteousness to be honest with you and um you just kind of not con concerned about anybody but yourself i believe again that contentment you know we talked about it in bible study and we're doing a series on wednesday night and so some of you heard that but i wanted to dig in a little deeper uh in our time together contentment is the key to, to getting you out of it and keeping you out of it so what is contentment it's about being satisfied and at ease 
while you are improving, while you're getting better, while you're progressing to the next level. So you're satisfied and at ease, but you you're that way because you know you you know you're not gonna be there. You know you're just passing by. Okay, you're not pitching a tent there or building a house there. You just know you're passing by. And so complacent means refusing to work to improve or to grow in Christ. And so when you deal with contentment, con contentment is about you having a good attitude about where you are while knowing you are on your way to another place, while knowing you're on your way to another level. Let me ask you this. Do you know that you're on your way to another place? Do you know that you're on your way to another level? Um, that's the truth. I'm going to announce it right now. You're on your way to another place. Get ready, get ready, get ready. You are on your way to another level. I told y'all that all of this stuff that we're seeing in the world right now is going to lead to a great reset. And the church is not going to be uh, uh, outside of this. Everything's going to go through a reset. And I'm telling you, a lot of things that are happening right now in your life, I mean, you're getting ready to go to another level. You're getting ready to go to another place. And so in Philippians, I want to read that to you. Go to Philippians chapter four. If you have a Bible or something, I want you to kind of check this out. He said in verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. The Apostle Paul is talking here. He, he didn't say that's where you're going to be complacent. He says, I'm going to learn how to be content there. He says, I know both how to abound, how to abase, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So here is contentment. He says, I can do that because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can be I can be OK there because Christ strengthens me. And he says, notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my afflictions. I love this part in the Amplified. He says, verse 13, I have strength for all things in Christ. Hallelujah. I can be content because I know I have strength for all things in Christ. You know, bring it on because I got strength for all things uh, in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength and ability. All right into me i am self-sufficient check this out in christ sufficiency so when you can be satisfied literally because you know that you are self-sufficient in his sufficiency man contentment is like it's calming uh i remember one 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 night last week i went to bed with this strong on me probably after i finished preaching it and I just it was like I was being enveloped by the presence of God. It's its like I'm good. I'm not afraid. I'm not panicked because I'm sufficient in his sufficiency. It, it's all about depending on God still. Right. And no matter where we go, it seems like we, we're kind of having to come back to dependence upon God. And I don't I don't really think you can ever find contentment outside of Jesus Christ. I don't. I don't believe you can find contentment outside of Jesus Christ. You know, the scripture, what we just read, it doesn't say satisfied to the point where you don't want to change. But it's satisfied for now until God brings the change. And that's what I'm I'm waiting. I'm, I'm not going to try to make the change happen. I, I trust and depend on God to bring the change. Sometimes you don't want to get in God's way. You don't want to mess up timing. You don't want to. You know, let him bring the change. I'm a witness. He can bring the change. There's so much lately that's happened to me where just, man, the 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 change and the blessing just shows up. I'm not expecting stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, being content with life involves appreciating what you have and where you are in life rather than parking there with the attitude of this is good enough. No. There's no there's no need to press for more. It's just good enough. Just, you know, I'm I'm just kind of wishing things are different. But I mean, you know, bless God, you know, some of us are golden pots and some of us are 
silver pots and well bless god some of us are mud pots and i just just got to be a mud pot and that ain't what we talking about remember christian complacency says that no matter what happens you're fully self-satisfied with your current personal effort we don't want to go there we want to get out of that place all right and so i believe that christian contentment which says no matter what happens you are fully satisfied in jesus I'm fully satisfied in Jesus. I'm not talking about being fully satisfied just with the, the circumstances of the situation. No, I'm I'm fully satisfied in Jesus, regardless of the circumstances, situations. I think that's what sometimes we think. Well, I just need to be satisfied with being a mud pot. No, I'm satisfied in Jesus. Therefore, I know I ain't going to stay a mud pot. Well, you just got to be satisfied with being broke all your life. No, I'm satisfied in Jesus. Therefore, I don't have to, you know, you know, let my situation in life cause me to, you know, be frustrated. So I hope you understand what I'm what I'm, I'm trying to articulate to you. The truth of the matter is that we can only find true fulfillment and contentment in Jesus Christ. Now, you're free to take the next 20 years of your life to try to say, well, I don't believe that. I believe you can find contentment in the stars and I believe you can find contentment and other people and i believe you can find contentment and money you can go you can do that now and then after you don't waste your 20 years you just go rerun this thing and and see where i told you you can't find contentment in in my opinion in no other place but except in jesus in jesus christ okay and so true true biblical contentment is a conviction that christ's power that his purpose and his provision is sufficient for every circumstance in life. So true contentment is all about being satisfied in Jesus. Yeah, that's the distinction that, that needs to be clarified. I'm, I'm satisfied in Jesus. We ought to learn how to walk through all kind of adversity. I, I know some of you know about adversity, right? <laughs> it's, it, you know. I, I really appreciate this young lady. I didn't get the name, but she said, she says, it's already been 20 years, Pastor. And I, I know you're right. It's already been 20 years. But you know what? It's not too late. It's not too late. You can you can declare and you can begin to walk. in your satisfaction, satisfaction, satisfaction in Christ. And that's why I am. I'm satisfied in Jesus, man. I'm good. Come what may. I'm satisfied with Jesus because. I know I ain't going to be here always because he, 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 he getting ready to move me to the next level. He getting ready to move you to the next level, man. Some of y'all better get ready today, boy. I'm telling you, you might have some and suddenly show up in your life the day God getting ready to move you. I hope your bags packed. He getting ready to move you to the next level. You understand? But there's one thing I do know. We have to choose to rest on God's promises despite what we may be going through in our lives. I think that's where contentment is founded. My choice to rest in his promises and rest in what he said. You know, fear, and I've said this to you before, the, the fear that Satan wants to put on Christian people is the fear that what God promised won't come to pass. And, and, and if you, if you, if you find yourself like walking around the house or driving in the car and you're like, you know, I'm afraid that what God promised me might not happen. That's fear. It's fear based. It's the ultimate fear. Get rid of it. God is able to bring to pass everything he promised. I am content in him. All is well. I don't need to be changing no gods, you know, <laughs> You know, well, I, you know, I don't know what happened. You, know, I'm God. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and make that broom, my God. You, dear God, help you. That ain't what we're talking about. And I'm telling you, this, this is going to be amazing time in your life. Um. And so, ultimately, I believe. I know the Bible says godliness plus contentment equals great gain, but when your contentment is in Him. I just believe godliness produces great gain because my contentment is in him. Be content today, man. No matter what happens, no matter what, 
what goes on, no matter what you hear, no matter what somebody say, be content today. Stick with Jesus and he'll stick with you. All is well in your house. Blessings upon you. God bless you. God keep you. Taff and I love you. And um, tomorrow, um, we well, I won't be in, in, in Bible study tomorrow, but you can you can tune in. But tomorrow, let's see, I'm going to believers, I'm going to the believers convention today. I will um be preaching for the night session tonight, and then I'll preach tomorrow at two, and then I'll preach um uh, Thursday in the morning time, the first speaker in the morning. And I'm gonna deal with a very interesting uh subject. I'm gonna deal with right righteousness versus self-righteousness you choose because anytime there's a, a weird thing going on in your grace life um the crack can be found in your foundation of righteousness and if you can repair the crack in in in, in righteousness you'll you'll find everything else flowing through and and doing what it needs to do so um yeah so you can log on and and hear those messages and we get to spend more time together other than that i think i'll see you i'll see you when i see you i love you guys so much pray for me um you know let's let's just go and change the world and make a mark that can't be erased i i feel your energy and your strength with me every time i stand up to preach that you know my friends are are lifting me up in prayer so i'm excited for you anyway i'm um I don't want to get emotional here and start crying. I got love y'all, man. I love y'all, man. You know, I don't want to do none of that. So um, all is well. And I'll see you guys. Uh, love you. Have a great day. Don't settle.